have a package of uh, parts here. I bought these off of eBay some time ago, and uh, I did some work um, on them, and I thought I'd shoot a video on what I did. Um, so all the work's complete. I'm just going to shoot this video of uh, documenting what I did. Um, so these are um, vacuum fluorescent displays. Uh, I bought uh, two for ten of them. Um, and uh, I actually bought eleven of them. I bought one to see if I could get it working because uh, they're very they're a very oddball display and then um, I uh, after I got that one working I went ahead and bought ten more um, just because I'm crazy uh, I had an idea of maybe I'd build them up and sell them on eBay or whatever never got around to it um, so these are uh, uh, two line um, Oh geez, how many? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, like 40 character displays, I think. Um, so let me uh, let me put this down and uh, yeah, I guess we can see that. Uh, so it's an ISE Electronics Corporation Japan, but it also says uh, Noritake Itron uh, Japan, so that's more typical of what you see in vacuum fluorescent displays. And it's got this uh, flex cable attached to it. Um, I'm not big on flex cables for the home garage because uh, they're a bit difficult to deal with. Um, so, um, the trick of this display is how to drive it. And um, I couldn't find a data sheet on it. Um, I did find another guy on the internet who had gotten one of these to work and uh, that gave me some hope. Um, so let me uh, let me rearrange the camera here a bit. All right, I think that's a little bit better. Um, so what I discovered was in addition to the flex connector, there's also a connector down here, um, and so I was very interested in this connector. It's an 18 pin, pin connector, which is a bit odd, um, but what I found in my journey was that the first uh, 14 pins are exactly the same pinout as every LCD display that you've seen from Hitachi and those folks. Um, it's a standard pinout for driving an LCD display. Pins 15 and 16 have no connection at all. And then 17 and 18 go over to a strange thing. Um, also on the flex connector, you can see that pins 17 and 18 are separated. Um, and 17 and 18 go to this little circuit over here, which is a, a bridge rectifier and a capacitor. Now this capacitor is pretty heavy duty. It's uh, 47 microfarads at 100 volts, so why would you spend money on a 100 volt capacitor? Um, so I was thinking, oh, maybe this thing's super high voltage to drive the, uh, to drive the display or whatever. Um, what I found out was from the other guy, I wish I could give him credit, um, he uh, was building it, he couldn't get it working, he, he contacted somebody else, that guy said, hey, you might try this or that. Um, and uh, whenever you have a bridge rectifier, it makes it look like you're driving it with AC, okay? So this board was obviously designed to have it driven with AC. Um, but you can drive it with DC. The bridge rectifier doesn't care if you put AC on it or DC on it. It'll work either way. Um, so you need to figure out, well, what voltage do I need? This is a pretty high voltage capacitor. Um, as it turns out, you need about 18 volts, um, which might be like a 12-volt AC rectified. So you need about 18 volts DC. Um, and um, like I said, that comes in here on pin 17 and 18. That 17 and 18 volts uh, goes over here to uh, a uh, transformer that isolates the two paths. It, there's also another DC to DC converter over here that does the really high voltage. I don't know what voltage vacuum fluorescence run out, but they're extremely high voltage. Um, so that, that happens over here. 
So all I need to do is supply some strange high voltage and then maybe drive it with a normal LCD um, program and the thing would work. Um, so um, that's what this video is all about. How do we get this thing? How do we get this thing working? So uh, I'll show you what I came up with. Um, I'm basically going to use, I want it to work on 5 volts. I guess that's the, the first thing I should say. I want it to work on 5 volts. So you can get uh, voltage converters, you know, up converters, little boards that go from 5 volts up to 18 volts or whatever I need here. So that's what I'm going to start with. So let me, let me show you one of those. All right, here's an assortment of uh, DC to DC converters. Um, not quite sure what all these are. Uh, I bought a bunch at one time. Uh, here's one that's kind of big. It's got uh, a little flat uh, inductor on it. Um, here's one that's um, probably some like five volt, uh, 12 volts to 5 volts, and it, and it ends up with a, uh, a USB connector so you can do charging. So if you have like a 12 volt battery in your car, you want to charge your cell phone, you can use something like that. Uh, here's one that's pretty universal. Uh, I've seen these around a lot. It says uh, DC to DC converter on the back. And this one has a... Uh, it's pretty heavy duty. Um, and then there are little tiny ones. This one is uh, kind of cute. Uh, I'm not quite sure what it does either. But anyway, there's a bunch of these on eBay. You can look around. All kinds of up converters, down converters. Um, uh, this is kind of what I settled on for my project. It's a, a tiny little... Uh, tiny little board and uh, 5 volts in and I forget what the voltage out but it gets me up to the 20 volts that I need um, so um, it has four connections a ground VN ground and V out and that's all you need to know so we're going to design our project around this board okay so we're going to uh, base our vacuum fluorescent display off of a TFT interface so here's a TFT um, and these are, oh, these are just dirt cheap, uh, two lines, 16 character or whatever. Um, and they have a, uh, a connector at the bottom that's, uh, a, a 16 pin connector. Now it doesn't matter. This is the trick. It doesn't matter whether the 16 pin is in a row or the 16 pin is two rows of eight. The pinout stays the same. It's amazing, but they've standardized on the pinout. So again, it doesn't matter if it's in a straight line or it's in a uh, uh, two, two lines of eight. It's the same pinout. So the trick is, though, that it's an 8-bit interface. And uh, it's 8 bits plus read-write. Let's see here. It's uh, uh, plus probably chip select. There's probably a whole bunch of stuff going on here. So it's just too many pins to deal with. You're going to eat up all your pins on your Arduino if you're going to use these things. So what pe most people do is they either buy them uh, with this piggyback board. Uh, that This one was purchased with the piggyback board, I believe. I don't think I soldered that on there. Um, but you can buy um, these boards by themselves, this LCD-1602. And it is an I2C input and then this uh, parallel, parallel output. So um, there's a bunch of these chips. Um, Philips over in the Netherlands invented I2C and they invented a bunch of chips to go along with it. So um, NXP was part of Philips. Now it's separate. Anyway, um, other companies have made parts for this. Uh, this happens to be a Philips, Philips part. I can't read the, the part number on it. Well, let's see, I'll use my new magnifying glass that I just built. Um, so this one is a PF, uh, PCF. 8574T and again it's this I squared interface and um, so if we could build something like this uh, that had two lines of eight um, then we could put that uh, on our vacuum fluorescent display and we would have I squared C um, so I couldn't find any boards pre-made that way, so I had, I decided to lay out my own boards. I'm going to lay out a piece of this. I'm basically going to recreate this PC board. Um, this potentiometer just sets the contrast of the LCD, so we don't need that. So all we really need is the one chip. And you can buy these chips separately. Um, and so we'll just lay out a little PC board. 
that basically clones the idea of um, of this board I squared C in parallel out, but a different connector type instead of 16 in a row, we'll do two lines of eight. So yeah, I think that'll work out pretty cool. All right, here's the schematic. Um, this is the uh, PCF 8574P. This is the I squared C to um, eight bit adapter. And uh, you can set the address of this thing. Um, I have a little jumper area here if you want to jump over it. Um, uh, you can, otherwise just leave it open and it defaults. I forget what, what address it defaults to. But, um, then you have your clock and data coming in. I've added an area here for the 4.7K pull-up resistors. And uh, yeah, there you go. So the only thing is that it's wired up uh, to the regular LCD 16-bit connector. Um, this display actually has a connector that has pins 17 and 18 as well, which we'll get to. And this little connector here, J13, is going to supply pins 17 and 18. It will, um, you'll see the in the layout, it'll go right next to here and complete the uh, 17 and 18. And it goes to this funny thing here. So anyway, uh, this is the schematic. Let's take a look at the uh, um, PC board. This is the PC board. Here's our I squared C part, the jumper area. Uh, this is the uh, 16. So uh, the first 16 pins are normal LCD type connection. And then here's pins 17 and 18. And they go to this funny thing here. And this is just an area. Um, I'm going to buy a little adapter board off of eBay that is a 5 volt to a 5 volt up converter. And it will just sit on top of here as a piggyback board on top of this board. So no, no need to lay it out and buy all the parts and everything. Just buy it complete. And then it will just sit on here. And uh, away you go. Uh, there'll be a connector up here. That's the iSword C connector, power ground, and uh, clock data. And then this will take some of that 5 volts and convert it to 18 volts. They're around 18 volts, something like that. And uh, this board actually had two of these. Um, so I get double the amount of boards per uh, PC board and some other things I added to it. But uh, this is the, uh, um, yeah, this is the board. Let's take a look at it. Okay, so this is what the board looks like loaded. Um, I'm using a, a through-hole version of the uh, I squared C um, part, and uh, this is the little uh, uh, DC to DC converter piggybacked, uh, piggybacked on the board, and a connector for the 18 pins. So uh, the um, board itself, I just took some scissors and cut the. Uh, Cut off the ribbon cable since I'm not going to use it, and I've added a uh, a dip uh, header, so the little PC board uh, pops on like that, and uh, yeah, it looks like it was made for it. It's very cool. So we have a, now an I squared C interface, and uh, we can hook up. Uh, let's see, where are we here? We can hook up our four lines, ground, power, clock, and data. So, come on, ground pin doesn't want to go on. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. There we go. All right, so we have ground, five volts, clock and data, that's the only thing that's going to be connected to the uh, to the display, and uh, we have our uh, Arduino Nano, and all it's doing is it's outputting um, it's outputting the I squared C data, and I have a little program in it. So let's hook up power and ground. I have a uh, power and ground on clip leads here. Put the ground on. Put the power on. And, oh, there we go. It's upside down. 
all the electrons are going to fall out. Alright, let me uh, turn off the overhead lights so you can see it. And, uh, alright, there we go. It's a beautiful display. It's really, really nice. It has a bunch of uh, special characters. Well, here's a bunch of extra characters. I'll run through the character set here. Um, so, regular character set. And a lot of Russian acrylic characters uh, up, up here. Acrylic. Uh, I'm not quite sure what all these uh, <laughs> what all these special characters are used for, but I picked out a few that I was pop that, that were popular with me, and uh, I thought were useful. So they're here on the next the next display. Yeah, these guys here. I think I figure I could use those sometime or another. Um, but anyway, really nice display. It is current hungry. It's operating at about um, 730 milliamps at five volts. Um, so uh, vacuum fluorescents do eat up a lot of uh, a lot of power, um, but I think they're just a, a really beautiful display. Okay, well, hope you enjoyed that.